What's up? It's Sierra. Hey, it's Ebony. And, and welcome, welcome to the, the Real Play Podcast. Podcast. Well, welcome everybody back to the Real Play Podcast. I'm Sierra. I'm Ebony. And we are here today with a special guest, Mr. Lawrence. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Hope you ladies are doing well. We are. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're enjoying the weather. Inside right now recording, but once this is over, I'm going to be out there getting oh, my, yeah. my sunshine on. <laughs> it's a little cloudy, but okay. Oh, you got cloud. It's sunny over here, girl. Oh, maybe I need to come over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, we're here today because we wanted to talk about the thing that everybody loves to talk about. And again, that is relationships. But before we dive in, I'm going to let Lawrence introduce himself. Um, we met not too long ago on Instagram, and we've been having some really deep conversations on relationships, on vulnerability, on you know, men and men and women, how we interact with each other. So I thought he would be a great person to come on today and give us a male perspective on the real play today. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Lawrence. Yeah, so yeah, my name is Lawrence Duff. Um, I'm currently here in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I attend church in High Point, North Carolina. Um, so I'm excited definitely to be here and, and, and see what it's all going to be revealed in this in this podcast <laughs> today and everything. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely excited for that. All right. Um, tell us your age. Oh, I'm sorry. 34. I'm 34 and single. <laughs> and single. <laughs> all right. So the way this whole episode came up, I am currently reading the book Relationship Goals by Pastor Michael Todd. A lot of people are reading it. It's number one. It's sold out. I think it's finally back in stores, but it was sold out. It's a great read. It's on how to win in dating, marriage, and sex. But it's not just about relationships, romantic relationships. It also goes into <clears throat> relationships with friends, um, family. It's just relationships in general. And so as I was reading the book, part of my book club, one of the questions that came up that I posed to the club was, we're sitting here reading this book, listening to, or listening to what he's saying, trying to digest it, try to apply it to our lives. It's only ladies in this book club. There's no men. <laughs> Are men out there reading this? Are they learning anything? Are they trying to better themselves? Because we may, not just saying his book is going to be the Bible of relationships and we're going to go off and be able to have perfect relationships after this but if we're learning things and implying them and then we go to try to talk to or date or court a man who hasn't learned anything about relationships from his parents or whoever raised him we're already 10 steps behind so you as someone who just recently got the book Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know how far you've dug in to read it, but do you know any other men in your life that have read or started to read this book or are reading any type of self-help books that would deal with relationships? Well, right now, not to my knowledge, <laughs> that there are any guys that are actually reading this book. Um, I've definitely um, spoke it up, so I'm definitely excited to dive into it. And, and see more so what the book was based off of the videos that he was doing. Um, I really got a, a good feel that's going to be a really awesome book to read. But I think that's really the problem, unfortunately, is that a lot of men aren't reading the material they need to improve themselves. So you are right now, there are some guys out there that are reading the material that, that are doing it. And then there are some guys that are not. So if you have a woman that's already reading some of the material, and she gets introduced to a guy that's, that's not on that level yet, you're already a step above. And unfortunately, either you're going to bring him up or he's going to bring you down. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that seems to be the vibe of, of today's society most read of the time. The book, but, you know, I'm re I read the Bible and, you know, I go to church and I follow those type of, you know, guidelines, which I think are good. But at the same time, there's a lot that can be left out that are learned from back when you're a child that may not be crystal clear if you're reading just the Bible and not looking at other things that may enhance it. Um, it's for you to see who you really are. 
deep down and how you can interact with other people? I think um, overall, like the foundation of your relationships really start with yourself. Um, so mm -hmm. if you're really, most people, we talk about self-love, but it is a hard pill to swap, like to like yourself right now. It's, it's okay to like yourself and also grow. Um, yeah. And I think that a lot of guys having to, I don't have to really, I love myself, but I don't really have to love myself because someone else does that for me, right? Yeah. So when they yeah. get out into the real world, it's like, oh, well, there's this girl over here. She loves me. There's this other girl over here. She loves me. And so I never really have to develop that self-love for myself, um, which I think is very important that guys should start to do, but oftentimes it's sad it takes a woman in their life to put them on that path. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a really good point, but also if you think like with uh, the mom doing more of the cuddling and grooming of a man, a mom is never going to be a, a father. That's just, there's a lot of great single moms out here, but you will never be a man. So that missing piece that the man needs is not necessarily there. So uh, Sierra, you spoke on about how a gentleman was talking about he reads the Bible and everything like that. Well, as we know, as a child, you don't understand everything necessarily. So although the Bible is a good read, just like needing that man in your life, you need some sort of understanding of a person who's been there, which there goes your pastor or elders in the church or, you know, people who dove into it, they may have different perspectives and understandings. So as a man, you're going to need somebody that can pour into you the understanding of what it is to be a man, what it is to be a husband. And moms do try to step up to the plate, but you're just, you're going to miss that mark of him relating to you on being a man. That's when the village really comes in into play. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's that whole village of male um, models to look at. And especially in a single, single mother, son uh, relationship. So when we were talking about this, that's when we really started to dig in and say how in relationships, men and women are looking for two different things. So women are looking for the man to be vulnerable with them and for them to feel comfortable being vulnerable back. And a lot of times men aren't, trying to be vulnerable because from back in the day they're learned they're taught like don't cry don't don't be soft like right, you see right. your knee take that as a man get up and run keep running <laughs> and so women we're we're supposed to feel as though they really want to be with us if they're vulnerable with us if they're open to us if they tell us their their dreams and their fears but a lot of men are kind of afraid to do that so how do we get to the point where both parties are able to be vulnerable with each other so that the relationship can grow because i think it's important to have that right right i i would agree i definitely think it's important to have um you really have to have a healthy balance because it's it is as instinctively as men are we are bred to understand we have to be tough we have to be the protectors we have to be the providers we have to you know if something go down, y'all looking at us to do to do something. So mm -hmm, absolutely. we we don't have that sense of we can be vulnerable because unfortunately, when you are a man out in this world, there are sharks waiting for you to be vulnerable to to take that and accept it. But that's what's that's bred in us as a child because of life experiences that the man before us went through, if they're even in our lives. And really, most of the time, what it's, it's not the father in life, but the mom's there. So now she's putting in these qualities that are more so emotional. So you have these either way too emotional dudes or these not at all emotional dudes because they saw their mom get treated a certain type of way. So they lose all sorts of feeling and emotion with it. So as a woman, when you're looking at us like, okay, where's your emotions? Where's your vulnerability? You have to understand that, one, we grew up with the instinct not to be vulnerable, but then we've seen it where our vulnerability has been taken advantage of. So can you, as a woman, make a man feel safe enough to even be vulnerable and not feel like he's going to be attacked or judged at that? 
Well, here's the challenge. Um, vulnerability is a problem in the Black community anyway. So mm -hmm. a lot of Black women have a hard time being vulnerable. Um, and that goes way back to slavery. And so I think that with the newer generations and we're learning about vulnerability and we're learning about different things, we can now shape the narrative. Um, but a, a one thing, two, three things that go along with vulnerability is trust. You have to be able to trust that person. Yep. And trust is shown by action. So a lot yep. of times guys are inconsistent. Therefore, mm -hmm. I cannot trust you. Um, and then right. also two other things that come along with vulnerability is shame and guilt. And I've talked about it on the podcast before, but guys are probably saying like, what if I'm not that superhero? What if I'm not that Superman for her? Like, can I really, if she starts to see the cracks in me, will she really like me at the end of the day or still love me? And so I think that um, shame and guilt may keep men from being vulnerable or um, letting us see different sides of them. Okay. Now, now, I will agree with that, but I, I ask the question this, though, is with a woman not having, or a little girl not having her father in her life, so all she has is a mother, which most of the time is hurt by a man, I feel like it may be a trouble where the little girl doesn't learn, like you said, does not learn how to be vulnerable because she doesn't have a man in her life to accept her vulnerability that she can turn to her daddy's love that she can open up to and express herself where she receives love in return but she has a mom necessarily that is most may man bash or, or hate their baby daddy so they take it out you know and you hear about it or they just themselves didn't have that fatherly love so i feel like do you think that there's an issue with young girls and childhood with their father as a start to this. So, yeah, so um, I can speak to that for one. One, I've talked about vulnerability in the podcast before, and that's something that I'm working on. Um, but to your point, I had both of my parents in my life. So um, my dad was there for me, and my mom, I live with my mom. Um, one thing that I've learned in counseling this year, actually, is that I, even though my dad has been in my life, I still have daddy issues, which is weird, because I've never, up until this point, we would have argued about like, there's no way. Um, and it's certain things with people. So it's like young kids raising kids, right? So mm -hmm. my parents didn't have the opportunity to be vulnerable with me because they were trying to live their life and trying to figure it out and didn't really know any better. And so now I'm having to kind of figure it out for myself. So I think it's um, young parents. I think it's generational. Um, Really, honestly, because if I look back on my mom's parents and my dad's parents, they were both married. So um, my dad's mom was very loving. My dad, my mom's mom was very loving. However, she was in an abusive relationship with my granddad. And so it's, it's kind of like this vicious cycle. And it takes that one person to say, okay, I'm not going to go for this. I need to find another way. So I think it's, it's very different paths that people can take. And it can show up in different ways. Okay. What What about you, Miss Sierra? So, I am like the ultimate daddy's girl. <laughs> um, I have an amazing relationship with my dad. He treats me like a princess, even at this ripe, young, tender age of almost thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think that if you don't have that in your in your life growing up, and those examples it could cause a lot of issues moving forward for you and how you trust a man or what you look for in a guy like i know what to look for and i know how they should treat me because my dad it treats me like that my dad has taught me from a young girl what to expect what to accept what not to expect except so if you don't have that then it could be definitely it definitely is something that's going to cause an issue when it comes to trying to start a romantic relationship with a man growing later on in life because you you're going to not have that ability to i don't think you're going to want to trust them i don't think you're going to want to take what they say as being real you're going to think everybody's like out to get you because you're feeling like the one person that should have loved me from the beginning the first man to love me didn't show me that attention so hey i'm just gonna take what i can get 
Okay. Now I, I wonder if because it's it's funny how y'all have two different sides um of viewpoints that I think that's awesome. But do you think if you were to come across a good man, could you be vulnerable enough to follow behind him? Absolutely. Because one, um, again, I will say, so what I've learned in my childhood has shaped me, but I also have a very different viewpoint than most people. And so it's things that I've worked on. It's things that I feel like I am good at discernment. And so I feel like if a good guy comes along, I will be able to recognize him and I'll fine, take the lead. I've been doing it for 30, I don't know, 32 years. So. <laughs> you got to think about it, girl. I, yeah. just, I got to think about it. Um, I think if the right one comes along, I would be able to, of course, I would be able to let him lead and be vulnerable with him. But the thing is, if I get to that point with you and I'm vulnerable with you and I tell you like the deepest, darkest, most hurtful thing that may have ever happened to me and your reaction, is that what I expect it to be? Mm. Expectation breeds content. You can't, you can't, you don't have to let. No, 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 <laughs> no. This, this is, no, this, this is, I know that the expectation thing, like you, you're all supposed to talk about ahead of time and how, you know, what you're expecting, but there's certain things that. Is like, it his reaction that you're looking for? He's not, not an immediate reaction. Mm -hmm. The way you treat me afterwards, after okay. you know this fact. So. If there, if I don't see a change in behavior when you know something, a certain thing, then that's gonna make me feel as though you don't really hear where I'm coming from. You don't really understand the depths of what I just told you, and therefore I don't feel secure with you anymore. I don't feel safe with you anymore. So, if I'm gonna, and I and I know they say that about guys. Like if guys are vulnerable with women, and then they don't, um, they laugh at them, or they use it against them, or throw it back in their face they're not going to be able to ever be vulnerable with them again because you're giving them the most sacred part of you, of your thoughts and your feelings, and you're having it thrown back in your face. So I don't expect him to like try to change the world for me, but if I let you in on this uncertain thing and I don't see any change in you, you just acting like it's another day and nothing, nah. That relationship will probably not last. Okay, so when you originally said it, I thought you were just being vulnerable just in general, but you're saying like it's you're being vulnerable to let them know like, hey, this is why I don't like X, Y, Z. And yeah, okay. like the That's deep the vulnerable. Not like, I mean, I'm yeah. going to be vulnerable anyway. Like I, I'm going to open up. My, my book is open. Like I'm going to let you know. But there's certain things like if I let you know to this level and you're not, you know, going to protect me from that, then at that point, point is when I feel as though we're not going to be able to last. That security, that comfort, all that's not there anymore. So, yeah, that's just how I feel. Could be overreacting, but that's how I feel. <laughs> and that do you, did happen do you in think, my life. Do you think of a guy doesn't possess vulnerability in a relationship to begin with and they're working on it, could you still talk to that guy? Or that woman. So, because you you just said you're going to cut him off. So that's it. I'm going to cut him off if I tell you if I'm super vulnerable with you, and that doesn't happen like week one, week two, month three. Like it go, it's further down the road. So if I'm at that point where I feel like we're really progressing, and I'm going to be vulnerable with you, and you don't, you know, reciprocate, then I'll let it go. But in the beginning, I like somebody who's more open anyway. So if I feel like you're really closed off on everything, like I, you don't talk about your family, your friends, you don't open up about, you know, what your dreams are and any of that in the very beginning, I probably wouldn't continue with you because I can't get to know you. Sure, I'm sure. not going to know who you are if you're not opening up about anything and you just want to talk about sports or cooking or you know, your favorite vacation, like that surface level. Now, I, I understand that. I completely understand that. But also, do you take in mind, it's, it's relatively hard for a man to be vulnerable right away because he's used to really one female that he's ever trusted growing up, which is his mom. And then you take him not having 
either not having a father or the father being there, but not really got on the right path. So you can still have a, a dad in your life that doesn't really guide you to the right path. But um, it's typically, it's, it's just a little harder for a man to open up because if you've been instilled to be tough, to be a bolt, to be a, a, a unbreakable wall for this woman, then it's hard for them to, to open up and fear that, okay, you're going to know the real me. So especially if I'm liking you and stuff like that, if you know the real me, are you going to judge me? Are you going to take what I'm giving you? And, and um, y'all touched earlier on it is, are you going to take what I give you and make fun of me about it? Because it is, it's, if a man opens up and you hurt him, it's a lot harder hit than you think it really really can break a man down like some some man can try to play tough like like they want to but if the right woman come along and they fall in love and that woman do something to break him it's hard for them to bounce back from that i feel like but that's just me i mean you the man so we we gonna take, <laughs> that probably. We'll take your word for it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so one thing I, I do want to kind of bring up too is um, we kind of talked about getting to know yourself before you get into a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and we've said this on other podcasts, like I don't feel like personally that you can be all the way whole before you get in a relationship. You're going to always be growing and learning. Um, do you think in today's society that like people, maybe relationships aren't working as well because people haven't taken the time to get to know themselves or absolutely absolutely <laughs> I, I, was, I was gonna have another point but i was trying to figure out what zia was saying yeah go ahead i just seen gestures uh i absolutely think that um that had that plays a major role in it because again like if you're going into a, a relationship not fully not fully well, right? You're always going to grow, but you want to at least be in a foundational point where you're not, as Bible says, you're not on sand, but you're on a rock where at least the foundation that you can build on is strong enough to carry the weight of what's about to be built on it. But if you are not even there yet, then the easiest thing can break you. And typically, I don't know why that is, but <laughs> you can be in a relationship for a while and not hit that trigger yet. And then you hit a trigger that you didn't even know was a trigger and you're wondering what happened to the relationship. Like, how did y'all even get to this point? Because you hit something that he or she didn't talk about and they didn't tell you it hurt them and you're doing it repeatedly, not on purpose, but because they haven't said anything about that pain that you struck. So it is important that you at least be foundational when you start a relationship, which is you want to go to counseling or you, you want to go and read these books and read these sermons and stuff like that. You want to do something that's going to pour into you mm -hmm. to help fill some of those holes that lives make, unfortunately. And what I was going to say, Ebony, with my gesture, <laughs> because that was actually um, part of what I read that I stood out a lot was that um, a lot of divorces happen because people don't take their singleness seriously. Mm. Don't take their sink. They don't take that time to really learn themselves, learn what they like, learn what they dislike, everything about themselves. And then they get married and then it ends up not working because now you're expecting your spouse to be able to fill those holes that you had that you couldn't even fill for yourself. So when you said that, I was like, oh, let me, let me find it. <laughs> That's what I was doing. But that it really was like one of those light bulb moments and how, why they say singleness is so, it's such a, an important season because you really do have to invest in yourself, learn yourself, and just prepare for the future. But you can't, you can't skip over your single season. Like it's there for a reason. Well, with that though, um, and it just popped in my popped in my head, is that even when you get into a relationship, the growing part are are more so the vulnerability, if you will, um, to be able to communicate and open up because there are some things that you're not even going to know is a problem until it happens. Amen. So it's like you're in a relationship and you didn't even think that was a problem, but it happened. Are you mature enough? Are you vulnerable enough to say, hey, this hurt me? And is the person 
mature <laughs> enough to accept that even though you may not understand why it hurt him, that it did hurt him. And what do y'all have to do together to get past this part and build stronger? And unfortunately, a lot of people don't are, aren't equipped with that information and they can hit these, uh, these roadblocks that could have been conquered with simple communication. Yeah, you know, um, us as women, we, as little girls, we were sold this dream, watched all the Disney movies, told us that marriage was going to be like a fairy tale and the thing for me is uh if you would ask me when I was younger I was like I'm going to be married between 21 and 25 21 hit I was like okay I'm fine I just turned 21 25 hit it's like a midlife crisis like wait okay wait a minute guy <laughs> what are you doing but now that I'm 32 and I've learned so much about myself I just feel like I probably would be divorced or un in a marriage and unhappy um, not, and then not even really, it had to do with the other person. It's really me and learning myself. And I also think that, um, to your point, when you do get into marriage, you're still going to grow, but it's, uh, trying to communicate with that person and maybe having daily, monthly, whatever, however, I mean, you would know when you get with that person, how often you need to communicate about this, but having check-ins and saying, you know, this is where I am right now and being honest and saying, you know, maybe I don't like you right now and you've been getting on my nerves and this is why, but you, you know, you have a, a option and a, a resolution coming instead of when the first issue hits like, Oh no, I need a divorce. Mm. So. Yeah. I agree with you as a young girl. I didn't have the, the date, the year of when I thought I was going to get married, but I did definitely think it was going to be a fairy tale and I wasn't going to be, 35 years old <laughs> and still single. Um, so that fairy tale was instilled in me and I'm like, yes, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that. When I got engaged, I was like, yeah, it's gonna be great. Then you go to premarital and you're like, wait, man, you start uncovering things that we- Somebody lied. We together, we were together for years and well, two years at the time. And some of the stuff that got uncovered during premarital never even, touched the tip of our brains of something to talk about or something to discuss or something that was going to be an issue. And since then, I learned a lot while I was in premarital. And then I learned even more in these past two years since completing the course and us going our separate ways. I've learned so much about myself. And I look back and I say, had I got married in 2018, honey, we would be not in a good place we definitely, I could see, I wouldn't be in a good place with myself because I didn't know myself then enough to be anybody's wife. So um, I definitely believe in premarital for everybody. Even when you're dating, you don't even got to be engaged. <laughs> Go. <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> Learn about yourself. Because I think the thing is, people think you're going to just talk about issues within a, your relationship and within a marriage. You really don't. You learn about yourself during those classes, during those sessions. And that's what helps prepare you for that next chapter. Well, I, I think you both touched on expectations of what y'all thought was going to happen, which I don't know if women know, that creates a lot of pressure for guys when you have these Disney, like you said, Disney fairy tale white horse rides to be off your feet. And, and you thinking that that is going to be the man that he is. Whereas you're getting a broken man, like you're, you're, you're not, you want somebody that's necessarily in essence somewhat whole, but at the same time, he's going to have things that he's not perfect at. So when you start putting his head like, oh, here come my white knight, like, hey, <laughs> oh, you can't mess this up. In his mind, he's like, okay, I got to get right. I got to make sure I got the best job. I got to make, make sure that I'm providing. I got to make sure I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. And he's so afraid to mess up that when he does, he doesn't even come to you to tell you that he messed up because the fear of letting you down. Whereas if some women would show that it's okay to make a mistake, then you, you create a more vulnerable person that's open enough to be like, hey, I tried this, it didn't work. What do you think I should have done different? That's when the, what that woman wants of him coming and talking to me and asking my opinion comes in because now he's open to say, hey, I tried this, didn't didn't do so well. I know you're really good at this. So what do you think? And that's how you build a relationship versus 
from like, why'd you do that? I can't believe you did that. And you going in and you just breaking him down. Like, see, this watch have never came to you. So do you think, <laughs> that's only a little bit funny because I feel as though one, how are we even gonna get to that point? You can be the sweetest person, but guys are still gonna have that fear of failure regardless of what you say or what you do because that's how they were raised. And if that's how they were raised, there's nothing I can do to them or say to them in their 30s that's gonna make them feel any different. I can't unlearn something for them. They would have to take that to therapy. But um, the part that I was gonna say was, um, when you were talking about the guys feel like they gotta have like the good job and the, you know, the money and all of that, I also don't think that's always something that the woman brings. I feel like guys will date you and they're not gonna propose to you and take it to the next level because they feel in themselves that they need to have this wonderful career and be moving up and all of this stuff. And they want everything to be picture perfect for you because they feel like they have to bring that. Some men fear going into it without the woman even saying that is a requirement for her. I think a lot of the times it's internal of what we, our expectations of what we want to bring to the relationship which ends up kind of slowing the relationship down. It's not necessarily the other person saying, that's my expectation, that's what I want. Okay. Sounds a lot like communication is key. It does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to bring up, and I'm not sure if you guys want to dive into this topic, but I was on Instagram <clears throat> today, and I saw that um, a post that said, uh, do you think um, sex, before marriage hinders a relationship and the reason why I brought it up because we're talking about communication and a lot of people say like communi communication tends to break down if you have sex before marriage because you are obviously having soul ties and getting tied up in this person and you're looking at you know this person like a god instead of um, really taking the time out and getting to know that person getting to know those broken pieces um, getting to know that person, when they're sad, they're happy, you know, they're mad. So do you guys think that that hinders um, a relationship? So I do not think that sex before marriage completely hinders a relationship. I do not think that just because you have sex with somebody, you're not going to take the time to still get to know them. But I do feel as though it does cloud your judgment and you may let someone get away with something that you normally wouldn't have if you weren't tying your guys' souls together in the bed. Like, I think that is true, but I don't think that just because you have sex with someone that you're a little less interested in trying to get to know them on a close, personal, deep level. Okay, so for me, I guess um, we have to look at what sex does. Like, Sex can, it can, it really can cloud judgment for me, I think. Mm -hmm. um, because having sex before marriage, one, the Bible tells you not to have sex before marriage, not because it doesn't want you to enjoy sex, but because there's reasons behind when you have sex, what comes with it. Like you said, there's a soul tie that comes with it. But also, if, let's look at it simple. Is the sex good or bad? <laughs> if the sex bad, they're automatically gonna lose interest off, off the gate because now they're like, oh, sex is horrible, so what's the point? So any relationship that you could have built up- Done. <laughs> it's done, like it's, you're, you're done, you're out, that's it. But also, you miss a lot of red flags because if the sex is really good, it don't matter because what's the big thing? Makeup sex? Like, oh, we can just make up sex, we just have makeup sex. That gets old in the marriage. When you keep fighting all the time and you have your makeup sex, it, it gets old. It gets repetitive. So one of the, the joys about waiting until marriage to have sex is whether sex is good or bad, when you're actually in love with someone, deep in love, and you're vulnerable, you're a lot more willing to open up and change things and hear things. I can come in and be like, hey, I don't like this. I do like this. Think about doing this and you turn what was bad into something amazing, and it was built on a deeper love versus you're having sex before marriage, and now you don't really know if you like this person or not. I'm just was wondering, I happen to see that as a post, and a lot of people, um, and maybe I missed 
like explain what the post was really about, but a lot of people were saying that they believe it's better to have sex when you're married, even though, you know, tons of people aren't, but. A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, had a, I had a question because I, I think I touched on this um, and I was curious about. <laughs> oh, I think it says uh, sex before marriage is very important. Finding out if you're sexual compatible, sexually compatible with your partner before committing is very necessary. And then it said sex before marriage, agree or disagree. And a lot of people were disagreeing. Well, that's that's good. They're disagreeing. So. But that don't mean they're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, got to be a minority. But Bobby's coming over tonight. <laughs> <I'm> the <a> majority. <laughs> But yeah, Lawrence, what were you going to say? So I see um, that y'all speak on Instagram. I see a lot of posts about this whole ride or die mentality that a lot of women post that is like, you know, no matter what happened, I'm going to be here for my man. I'm going to hold him down, you know, because he going to hold me down when he get out. Like, I, as two Christian ladies, like, what do y'all see that? when you see posts like that about this whole struggle mentality that has really kind of impacted society today. Do you see my face? This is probably why I'm still single. Cause one, I ain't riding and dying with nobody. Now <laughs> back in college, I used to be riding around with guys and I feel like that was so dangerous and stupid and dumb. So uh, the Ebony today, I'm not riding and I'm not dying for you. Now I am loyal to a fault. <laughs> I will be loyal. I'll stick with you. Not if you go to jail, though, because... Well, say you're together for, like, a year and a half, and he goes to jail for some petty for thing. That, yeah, some petty thing that maybe he... Bye, sir, because, you no know, end of relationship. But you never know, because sometimes people... If it's, like, a traffic ticket or something of that nature, you know... Say how, you, how, you, how you go to jail for a year for a traffic ticket? I'm just saying, I don't know. Maybe you forgot to pay your, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they will put a you whole in bunch jail. of tickets. But like, say he got into like a fight. Somebody rushed him. He got in a fight. And he just happened to hurt him more. Now he's got a charge with battery, and he's in jail for a year or something. That's different. I'm talking about if you go and shoot somebody or you know something silly. No, I'm not saying at that point, like be a grown man. And, and also with the fighting thing, like if you have a tendency to fight all the time, absolutely mm -hmm. not. You got to go because the thing is you, you're going to take your anger and eventually turn it on me. No, thank you. So mm -hmm. I, and I need you to know how to control yourself. So depends, but most likely no. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why it's so important for women to, because the word submissive is look, that is dirty or is a bad word to say, but it's, it's really not. But when you have a godly man, there are certain situations you're not going to have to worry about getting into because you have a godly man. So when the Bible tells you to, to submit to your husband as unto the Lord, what people miss is submit to your husband as unto the Lord. So the, God is telling your husband to submit to him so you can submit unto your husband. So if you don't have a submissive husband or or someone that you feel like, even before you're in a relationship where you feel like he's not going to be submissive to the Lord, you might want to reevaluate that situation because chances are, if he's not following God, he can make some fleshly mistakes. See, I look for leadership qualities, and that's the problem today. A lot of guys, honestly, um, and maybe the, the guys that I've come across don't really want possess want leadership qualities or either possess it like they are just too busy i can choose from three girls and so what makes you think that i need to do this you know have this quality or you know i don't have to really settle type mentality okay i think, I think that goes back to how they were raised especially if they were raised in families with um a lot of strong women who took care of them all the time, every beck and knee they had, it was taken care of. So then when you get older, it's like a woman wants you to stand up and be a man and act like the man and lead. But you're like, they're like, nah, I never had to do that. And I've been living just fine. <laughs> so That's the mom. It That's goes the back to the mom. But then the mom was doing what she thought she was doing to make sure that her child was happy. But she's setting him up 
for a lot of difficulties when it comes to dating and trying to find his spouse because most women, not all, but most women don't want that type of guy. The type of guy that you got to feel like you got to take care of because we want yeah, the other way around. Some some women do. But some do. Not I. <laughs> not I. <either. laughs> so you see the struggle balance there though is the mom is cuddling and babying his child and he grows up like that, expecting for his wife to cuddle and baby him. Mm -hmm. And that's not how that works out. So you have the mom that's like, oh, you know, don't don't be a man. Be my little baby boy. I, you know, I'm going to take care of you. Get in trouble. Don't worry about it. I'll get you out. You know, and you mess a man up from growing up to be protective. And most, I don't want to say most, I don't say most, but there are some moms out there that treat their sons how they want to be treated and wh what i mean by that is like the dude you <laughs> slept with to get the baby in the first place isn't sensitive to you isn't affectionate to you so what are you doing you're holding your baby all the time you're cuddling your baby all the time you're you know you're going over the top love and affection all the time because it's what you wanted from the man you was with that you didn't get so now you got this this grown man that's still a baby Baby. Yeah, okay. almost treat them like that's their name. And then that also, then there's the ones where they treat, they literally treat their young sons as the man of the house. Yeah. And how that affects them growing up, I'm not exactly too sure because I haven't dated anyone who was the man of the house growing up. But I'm sure that can make. They feel it, like they have to be everything to everybody. It's probably harder. I've I've seen it. I've seen it, and what it creates is a sense of control. If you ever get them guys that feel like they have to be in control all the time, it's because they were taught you have to be in control. This is what you're supposed to do. They raise you to, to be the man of the house. So now that you're fully grown, now it's like, okay, so this is what's going to happen. You're going to do this, 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 and this, because they're used to it. They don't do it on purpose. It's literally how they're raised. So if you have a man in the house being the man of the house, you allow that child to be a kid and experience, you know, a uh, uh, kid experience. Okay. I'm going to look for that. Look. You know, just when you first, when I date someone, I never knew, I never thought how it would be so important to have to know exactly where they come from and how they were raised in the beginning. Like, you're just like, oh, I like this person. This person's cool, but I don't think I'm at that age where I can just sit there and waste a whole lot of time just liking them. Like, I need to know exactly where your roots came from, how you were raised, because that's going to determine really who you are um, and where our possibility of growing can go based off of what you've been through. And get to know their family. Mm -hmm. Get to know their family and keep in mind that family lie too. So, just that's <laughs> Oh, family lie. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of people saying that, you know, they end up finding out like the person was married and didn't know and the family all, no, nobody ever said anything. Say yeah, just crazy. I see that on TV. I haven't seen it in real life yet, but I've seen it on TV where they're like, I'm not going to tell his business. He's going to tell her. You know that he's married. You know he's dating a girl. Why would you let the girl be a side chick and she has no idea? That's not fair to her. No, tap me on the show to tell me, girl, let me tell you something real quick. <laughs> Drop a little sticky on my car. I don't even have to know it's from you, but let me know. <laughs> now, are you, but there's going to be signs. Are, are you ladies saying that y'all miss all the signs? Like, you can never call him at a certain time or, you know, you'll call him and he'll wait to call you like maybe 10, 20 minutes later. Like, there's signs to let oh, you this know. Like, it never happened to me. Yeah, it hasn't happened to me either. <laughs> but um, the show that I was actually talking about is a reality show called Love After Lockup. So, <laughs> look, I love my reality shows. So the girl was a side chick. She, he was in prison, so there really wasn't a way for her to know. Unless, well, I guess you can Google it up and check marriage records or whatever, but. You got to do that too before you get in a relationship these days. Google people. You got, you got a Google people now? Like that yeah, was that? Absolutely. Yeah. I haven't Googled anybody yet. Um, but I do know people that if I needed to Google someone, I know who to call up. Like, girl, check this person out. I watch Catfish. I don't want to be Catfish. 
I don't want like there to be a whole bunch of secrets. But then at the same time, I feel like if I'm talking to you and we're getting to know each other, you should be able to feel as though you can tell me the truth and I don't have to go searching. Cause if you search to me, that's not even a real relationship. If I got to search your information out. It's 2020. So I don't know. You really you have to search somebody. I, out? I, depending on how I met you, if I met you on Instagram, if I met you um, just in person once, and I don't really have, we don't have any mutual friends in common. I need to know something about you. I just can't be going on dates not knowing anything. I mean, I have done it before, but that's besides the point. Moving forward, I need to know something. But you don't, you don't want to take the chance of him telling you and you waiting to learn. From Me him. looking at information, I'm not going to know your whole life story. You know, I can pick up bits and pieces of information about you. And I just want to know that I'm safe that you are not crazy, that you may not have a criminal criminal record. Like, what if I get in the car with you and, you know, you sell drugs or something, I don't know, and uh, I go to jail because I don't really know you, but I'm just in the car with you. So I just need to know a little bit of background information, you know. Now, there are women out there that you need to, that you got to worry about and search on because you got a crazy baby daddy that, you didn't tell. Y'all just broke up a couple hours ago, like, <laughs> and then he calling your phone or popping up for you, like, hey, this is my baby mama, like, so it, it can go both ways, too, because it's the women true. that just, they don't say nothing, be like, I'm done with him, it's over. Went y'all part ways about five minutes ago, like, hold up now, what? <laughs> but you can't search that out. How you gonna look that up? So, never mind, let me wait. <laughs> what? And you can't say you can't look to see if they um, left them five minutes ago, but you can look and see. You know, I wonder if the you know baby dad is still in their life. You know, search they the got their page. page. Mm -hmm. Yep, look they, at that their page. They're not gonna put that on their page, child. Yes, they, they, do. Not, they not all of them. They do not put. If you about yours, you're not gonna put that information on on Instagram or on Facebook or any social media what's going on with your child and your child's father if you're not together. Now, unfortunately, people today, Facebook will tell you a lot of stuff because they put those little posts about, I can't stand my baby daddy, or they, they post a lot of stuff. But what, what I look for is, if you look on their Instagram, because they was in love once. So they have pictures up there. When you start seeing the pictures be removed and everything else, you got to look and see how, you know, Look at that timeline, see when the picture was posted and stuff like that. You, you find out. Got to go do a little investigation. I'm not saying like go deep dive into a person's life because you do want some mystery. You want to learn about a person, but at least the little basic stuff, you need to know that you're safe, you know? Mm -hmm. You won't go to jail, things like that. Gotcha. I, got you. I don't you. think anything is wrong with that. And, it, and the good thing is, back in the day, you could not Instagram anybody. You could not go on people's Twitter and see a little bit about them. You just had to get to know them in person. But now you have a little bit, use, your, use Google, use um, things that, you know, we have access to now. <laughs> okay, I'm, maybe I'll get to that point. I'm just not there yet. Uh, maybe I, I'm it's, it's too. I don't mind, not to say that I don't, I don't really... People, you have to earn trust, right? So I can't give you full trust right off the bat. So in order for me to do that, I need to know some things about you. I can't just, no, mm -mm. I've been on one to me, no. Well, it's the that would be the, the perfect reason why it is so, so, so important to have a relationship with God. Because if you meet somebody, the first thing you should be doing if you're interested is praying about it. So God, oh, absolutely. is this somebody you want me to be with? Because he didn't tell you, like, you know, I are now run. You need to run fast. Like, you, you'll get those signs and those indications. But if you don't have a relationship with God and you just out here willy-nilly, you going you might strike out a lot more than you want to. That's true. That's true. Thank you for adding that because that, that's key. That is key. Um, and it's also if you can meet someone through a mutual friend. So someone that knows that person, that's better, too. Um it's just a lot harder when you just meet somebody that no one knows. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, one thing that I want to talk about too, speaking of like Instagram and social media again, um, what about this perfect relationship, relationship goals, hashtags on social media? Do you think that those play a big, huge role on people wanting to be in a relationship like they want to post 
they might not be happy in their relationship, but I look like I'm happy. I cannot stand that. I hate when I see those hashtag relationship goals because it is you can you can manipulate pictures and everything so much to make it seem like you're so so happy. So it's like you you take this shot with the sun behind you and like this is my everything. We always gonna be together. He just know he's just so good to me. Y'all just got in an argument and a fight. Y'all was just in each other's throats like two seconds ago. And it gives these this false confidence of that's what I need in my life. I need a relationship that, you know, I can post about or I see these relationships that are so good. And you could have a really good man that just needs a little bit of help, but you see this perfect little relationship thing and your whole mind frame changed. And that was like, you leave a, a, a good guy to end up with a bad one all because you won't, you feel like that he's not worthy enough. Yeah, I do think that those type of pictures pressure people to want to hurry up and jump into a relationship so that they can be the next person posting. Whether it's a great relationship or it's a terrible relationship and they can take two pictures a once a month to post. They want to let the world know, like, it's all good over here, baby. I got somebody. Like, we cute. Ain't we cute? We cute. <laughs> we got matching t-shirts on. Like, everything is great. And you fight every other day. So those, it's good to see those pictures. Like you say, oh, black love, like that's real. Like I want that. But at the same time, you don't want to look at it like, oh, I have to have that now. And I don't care who it's going to be with. We about to make this work. So we can be posting pictures. So my friends can like it and we can become, um, what is it? Uh, when it's all over the internet. I'm like an old person. Um, viral. <laughs> it becomes a viral picture. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't even help you out because I was. <laughs> yeah, we want to we have a viral picture or a viral video of us doing a dance together because we relationship goals and y'all don't know anything about each other. So it's good and it's bad. It lets you see that love is out there, but then at the same time, you have to take it with a grain of salt because you don't know what's real and what's not. That is definitely true. And I was going to say, um, it's about being realistic, too. I think sometimes um, our expectations and what we see other people have make us say, oh, you know, I'm going to meet this person and I'm going to be, um, you know, dating for three months and then we're going to get engaged. I'm making something up, but I'm going to get engaged and we're going to be married and we're going to have kids in a year. I mean, that sounds amazing. That sounds great. But is there anything behind that relationship other than you wanting to hurry up and get married? Now, who's doing it too? Is it the man pushing it or the woman pushing it? Because most, because most of the time it's what the woman wants this perfect Polaroid picture world. And once again, you got pressure being put back on. So it's like, okay, now we got to perform for everybody on social media. We got to look good. We got to pretend like we happy. And that don't do nothing but can irritate him a lot more because now it's like we not this ain't even us. You you faking out here for all these likes and I'm over here miserable suffering. And when a man feels like he is suffering, he will suffer in silence and you will think that he is happy until he drop a bombshell on you. Well, here's the thing, too. If you start performing at the beginning of your relationship, you're going to have to perform in the middle. You're going to have to pre uh, perform when you're married. You're going to have to keep performing so, so people don't see what's really going on. Because at that point, then you're used to it. You're in it. And you don't want anyone to see, anyone to see the cracks. So say don't do it. Don't perform for anybody. Don't put pressure on, mm -hmm. on your relationship. It, the world will give you enough pressure for the rest of your life, just being in a relationship. You have so much pressure in it already. When you add unnecessarily tension and pressure to any situation, you're you're going to cause it to burst. I, I think mean, it's two people putting pressure on themselves. Because, I mean, yeah. Sierra and I, we're in our 30s, and everybody's married and or getting married and or have kids. Mm -hmm. So it is a lot harder when you look around and you're like, dang, I'm the only one single. And your friends are like, you live in your best life? And you like, but... I want to live my best life with somebody. It'll somebody. be great, right? With somebody, it'll be great that you know I'll be able to share experiences, go on vacations. You know, I'm not saying have kids right away, but be able to explore and you know have fun with someone. But here we are. 
uh, what's what's the old saying? People who are married want to be single. People who are single want to be married. Like it's just <laughs> the grass is always gonna be greener. I've learned uh, I get married, and then it's gonna be green where I'm at. <laughs> right, it's gonna be green where I water it. Cause I I've learned to be content in my singleness and happy. Because one thing I've seen in my life is like you don't really know what the next season's gonna take you, and so just enjoy it. Have live your best life, basically. Absolutely, absolutely. You take the things that you learn in the season to apply them to move you forward for when the next season comes, you're not stuck doing the same thing, trying to figure out the same thing. If you're learning in your season, you're taking these nuggets to build up. So when you are in a relationship, mm -hmm. you already have, again, some foundation to stand on, some things that you learn and experience that you don't have to make mistakes when you get with somebody. Yeah. And also, I don't want to look back and say, man, you remember that time I was single and I can go anywhere and do anything? <laughs> you know, and I didn't. And I did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and typically whenever you start to think negative or start to think these thoughts, literally your mind will start to think and your body will follow. So if you start to think like, man, I wish I was single, I wish I was single, you're un unknowingly going to start doing things to create you to be single and to get, in a, to get out of the relationship you're in. Arguments, petty arguments, or things will start to spark because your, your mind, which... uh. George Myers, The Battlefield of the Mind, which is another book that people should read. Again, these are all things. This is why you should read and have a whole lot of information. Can you say the and, name of the book again? I'm sorry. Uh, it's Joyce Myers, Battlefield of the Minds. Oh, got it. So yeah, I don't know. If, I have, have, you, have you ever read those books? Any? I have it. Not so I, I read it. I have it. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's, it really is a really good read because the importance of tackling like your, your own inner thoughts will help you in a relationship because the spouse you're with already will have some thoughts they need help with. So if you battle your own thoughts and now you got them coming over, they battling thoughts, you got a war that's that's gonna be tough to win. Yeah, mindset is key. I think this has been a really good conversation on everything from, you know, vulnerability, relationships, your, um, the way you're raised, um, we've really touched a whole lot in this <laughs> in this episode. We've been all over, but it all is for the good of you, you know, looking into yourself and hoping that everybody takes the time to do that, especially during this time where we're all slowing down, that we're all actually taking the time to look inward. Um, but I know we don't want to make this episode too long. So <laughs> is there any last thing? Um, any anything else you would like to say, Lawrence, before we we close out? Any nuggets you want to leave? Anything you <laughs> on the tip of your tongue, and maybe you know I jumped in and interrupted or something. Like, yeah, let us let us have it. So, I will end by saying that it is very important that you continue to learn and grow in whatever season you are in, and first and foremost put God at the front of your relationship, at the front of your life, because you need guidance. And God, the all-powerful, all-knowing, is here to give it to you. Mm -hmm. So continue to grow and continue to make sure that you are building your relationship with God to help you through the struggles and the, and the trials that come through. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Well, thank you. Um, I do have one last thing, and that's to give you guys a positive vibe. And it's a quote by Brene Brown. <clears throat> and it says, daring greatly means the courage to be vulnerable. It means to show up and be seen, to ask for what you need, to talk about how you're feeling, and to have those hard conversations. So with that, we want to send out some vibes to you guys to have those hard conversations, to communicate, to show up, to be seen, and to get what you guys need. And with that, we are going to say we'll see you guys next time. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on all social media platforms at The Real Play Podcast. We would love to hear from you, so leave us a comment, DM, or voice note. And don't forget to come hang out with us on our next episode.